The Harmful Effects of Pesticides on Frogs by Lindsay McGuire and Michelle Petrie. Currently, 6,260 amphibian species have been discovered. Of those, 5,532 are anurans, the group that includes frogs and toads. One third of all amphibians are either in danger of extinction or have recently gone extinct. There are many reasons why anurans are going extinct, though one in particular has played a vital role in their destruction. Chemical contaminants called pesticides are a type of poison that cause a steady decline in frog and toad populations. The skin of frogs and toads readily absorbs chemical pollutants, which are then trapped in the animal's body. Once in the animal's body, pesticides can cause immune system suppression as well as growth and developmental problems, particularly malformations. Most mutations arise as extra appendages on frogs and toads. The pesticides also interfere with certain hormones leading to hermaphrodism in some frog species. Pesticides are so widely used in our environment today that for many it is hard to believe that they are actually poisonous. The EPA estimated that nearly 5 billion pounds of pesticides were used in 2001 alone. The most commonly used pesticide today is atrazine. We apply it liberally over our crop fields and our grassy lawns. After they are applied, most pesticides enter waterways from agricultural and lawn runoff. It is from this runoff that frogs as well as many other creatures are exposed to this pollutant. Other species can also be harmed by atrazine and other agricultural chemicals, including humans. And yet we spray atrazine and other hazardous chemicals on the foods we eat and the lawns our children and pets play on. Despite these impacts, products that contain atrazine are only required to have the word caution on their labels. Growing awareness of the many harmful impacts of pesticides are motivating many people to develop means to lessen or entirely replace their use. Planting methods such as crop rotation and intercropping help maintain and sustain the fertility of soil. Crop rotation involves planting one type of crop for one growing season and then a different one for the next. This method takes into account the nutrients needed by each plant and allows for soil recovery between planting cycles. It also helps to prevent soil erosion and degradation, decreases the use of synthetic fertilizers, and reduces pest problems. Intercropping involves planting multiple crops on the same plot of land. The main goal of this method is pest reduction. For example, one type of crop that a pest might like may be surrounded by another they do not. This helps to prevent the total loss of the crop. In turn, this creates higher crop yields with little use of pesticides. Another method includes using compost and manure to help maintain the levels of nitrogen. By adding soil amendments such as compost and manure, leaching of nitrates can be reduced. Using biological defenses rather than synthetic pesticides helps maintain soil and water quality. Praying mantis and ladybugs are great defense against small insects such as grasshoppers and aphids. Collectively, all of these methods help to prevent the use of pesticides and increase soil fertility. By educating people on these alternative methods to using pesticides, we will help keep our waters clean and our soil rich and full of life. Help us keep our planet clean and stop crop dusting our children.